Hello everybody. Well, I'm back. I got me another article here and uh, it just seems like everything. And you let me know in the comments, don't you think everything is just chaos? There's that word I used again, chaos. I'm a woman of very few words sometimes, but then sometimes I'm a woman with a lot of words. <laughs> but anyway, this is becoming terrible. I mean, Brian Anderson discusses the frightening exodus of New York PD officers. I don't think I've done this article. I should have checked first, but I'll just delete it if I have done it before. But uh, welcome to my channel. God love you. Hit the like button if you like, and please subscribe. Share, too. Please. Appearing on Newsmax, former New York City Commissioner Brian Anderson revealed that New York City police officers are leaving the force by the thousands before their retirement because they are not being supported by the city's administration. New York PD officers are reportedly quitting in record numbers, and New York City Mayor Eric Adams claims that he is not concerned over the news, suggesting that the city will just replace them. Uh-huh. I say if you got good police officers, you better bend over backwards to keep them. <clears throat> During an interview at Newsmax National Report on Monday, Anderson said that he was not surprised by the exodus. It doesn't surprise me, but it's also very frightening. I was raised with a lot of family members and friends who are police officers, and they look forward to doing their 20 years and out. That was reasonable, but now it's actually unbearable said the former commissioner who served under New York City's mayors Rudy Gulani, Gulani, I used to be able to pronounce that name, Gulani, and Michael Bloomberg, who was a lifelong Democrat that switched to Republican to run for mayor, then became an independent while in office, then switched back to Democrat years after leaving office. Anderson's remarks come following a report from the New York Post showing that almost 2,000 officers are planning to quit the ranks before even getting their full pension, which is up 71% from 21. That's 2021. That's almost twice the number from last year. And what we've got to do is we've got to add those numbers up. So now we're talking about almost 3,000 officers experienced in some manner leaving the force, he said. The net result is less qualified or less trained individuals on the street, less institutional, institutional memory, more reason to have encounters that may not have to happen, may not have to happen. It's all about public safety at the end of the day. That's what frightenings about the fact, too, that they're leaving before they qualify for their pensions, Anderson added. Meanwhile, according to the former commissioner, uh, public sentiment has turned against policing. The criticism they have faced over the, these past years has just been so negative and assumed the attitudes that these officers face daily from people, Anderson said. They're second-guessed all the time. They don't feel the administration has their backs. These are not exactly optional working conditions. Optimal. Optional. Well, working conditions. In other words, bad working conditions. <laughs> I'll do it that way. During the Gulani, or Jayulani, Gayulani years, the mayor gave them clear messaging. Go out and do your job. We've got your back. We saw the results. Crime dropped, he added. Anderson also reported to the New York Post reported that Jose Elba, A-L-B-A, the Bodega, B-O-D-E-G-A, Bodega, 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 employee who was recently cleared of murder charges after he killed an armed man in self-defense as the man was assaulting him in the store has decided to return to his home country in the Dominican Republic. 
It was very clear what was happening there. And this man, an immigrant who comes to America because this is the land of law and order, puts himself in a position where he had to defend himself and he's the one charged with murder, Anderson noted. Oh, that happens to a lot of them. Oh, yeah. Even the uh, in-home break-ins. That's what I said in another video, boy. If your home is getting broke into, you grab your arm. If it's a gun, ball bat, whatever you got. But you be sure that if you hit that assailant coming through that door, he falls halfway in. Now that's an old, I think an old law, but I think it still holds. Because you'll be the one that'll be in trouble. Not the one breaking in your house. That That's stupid. My God in Himmel. That is so stupid. You come to this country, you work hard, you just want to make a living for yourself. Then, of course, you're facing the unthinkable where someone comes in, tries to attack you in your workplace, he added. It is. It's, it's terrible. It's unthinkable. That was a very short article. But, oh my God, the truth in it. I mean, it's, it's something else. It's just, I can't understand it. You're, you're, you're taking care of your home, your family, your children, your wife, your husband, whatever. Someone's busting in your house. But if you make the wrong move, you're the guilty party. Uh-uh. No. That's got to change. That's terrible. If I even hear somebody jiggle my door, I'm going to call the police first. But before the police get there, if he busts into the door, you know... I don't have any weapons. I probably better get one. My daughter did. Yeah, my daughter did. She's taking shooting lessons at a at a uh, place where they train you and how to do it, you know. But um, I was a security guard, so I've had my training. Mm-hmm. But I don't own a pistol, but I guess I better get one and renew my license. Yep, it's just terrible. Let's see what this one says about hunting Hunter Biden's laptop. Man who had Hunter Biden's laptop says FBI tried to silence him. As trust for the FBI appears to be at an all-time low, the latest accu accusation by the computer repairman who had Hunter Biden's laptop just adds fuel to the fire. John Paul Mac Isaac is the computer repair shop owner at whom Hunter Biden left his infamous laptop, Isaac is claiming that the FBI agent threatened him in an attempt to silence him about the damning evidence left on the device. <laughs> I mean, good gravy. Is this where it comes in, you're damned if you do or damned if you don't? What does protection mean? Is there a meaning behind protection anymore? The innocent? The guilty? Where's all this gone? It, it's like an ocean with high waves. In and out. In and out. In and out. In and out. Stupid. <clears throat> oh my God. The repairman has written a book. God bless his heart. Called American Injustice, My Battle to Expose the Truth. I'd like to get that book. That would be good reading. See if you can find it. Yes. In it, he talks about how two federal agents showed up at his place of work and threatened him while taking Hunter's laptop from him. A subpoena was issued to his Mac shop in Wellington, Wilmington, Delaware, in December of 2019. Isaac agreed to hand over the laptop to the FBI two months previously, but was met with threats. He made a lighthearted joke telling the agents, Hey lads, I'll remember to change your names when I write the book. Agent Wilson kept walking, but Agent Demero, D-E-M-E-O, paused and turned, faced me, Paul Mack writes, 
In an ominous warning, one of the agents responded, it is our experience that nothing ever happens to people that don't talk about these things. Was I being paranoid or had what the agent just told me been a direct threat or at best a thinly veiled one? He writes as he tries to process the encounter. President Joe Biden's son left his laptop at Isaac's shop in April of 2019 and never returned for it. After finding horrific images of prostitution and illegal drug use, he gave the FBI a hard drive of the laptop contents. After federal agents, agents did nothing, Isaac gave then President Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giulani, Giulani, Lane, a copy, whatever, Rudy, I used to be able to pronounce that last name, but I'm tired. <laughs> Evidence of Biden knowing of his son's shady overseas business dealings came to light. Through leaked emails, text messages, and financial documents, it became clear that the Biden crime family used political leverage to advance overseas business dealings. I read something about that a few months back. And how corrupt is the FBI? Two days after they raided Donald Trump's private residence, Hunter Biden, whose laptop proved multiple felonies, the FBI had, has had for years, hops on Air Force One for family vacation. Elites tried to stop the information from spreading, but eventually social media spread the news. You know, despite more evidence, the FBI knows what to do with the corrupt bureau has failed to act on it. The Biden family remains in good graces of government agencies. Lordy, lordy, lordy. <clears throat> well, this one here, let's see if I can uh, get to it. Eight people injured an apartment explosion in Chicago. On Tuesday morning, Chicago emergency personnel responded to a chaotic scene in the South Austin neighborhood where the top had been blown off of a four-story residential apartment building. Building explosion on the west side of Chicago. Fire department on scene requesting five ambulances. Image from Sky Cam 9 above scene at Washington Central Avenue. Firefighters searched through the rubble and found eight injured people who were rushed to the hospital in a mass, ca mass casualty EMS bus. Three of the victims of the explosion remain in serious to critical condition, according to department officials. Firefighters were also quick to evac evacuate the building next to the building where the explosion occurred. Chicago Fire Department Deputy Sh uh, Chief Mark Furman said he was confident that they had found everyone who was inside the building. He detailed that the special, specialty crews reinforced the upper floors so firefighters could safely make sure they didn't leave any victims underneath any of the debris. In addition to Chicago Police, Firefighters, Medical Emergency Personnel, agents from the Chicago Bomb Squad, Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives also joined the scene. There has been no uh, indication as to the cause of the explosion. Residents of the area at the home at the time reported hearing a loud explosion. I was asleep and all of a sudden there was a loud booming, resident Lawrence Lewis told reporters. I woke up to my windows gone, my front door blown open, I just saw smoke and I ran out of the house. I'm shook up right now, he added, well no doubt. God love him. Otis Manning was across the street when the explosion occurred. My heart almost shot out of my body, said Manning. I saw windows busted open. I saw debris. Video footage shows the extent of the damage, with much of the top floor reduced to rubble and bricks blown into the streets and on top of cars. Oh, my God. <clears throat> you can watch that on YouTube. Yeah. I don't know how to put things into my video like others yet. Dear Heavenly Father, my God. 
Yeah, that poor girl that's working for Biden now. Uh, White House press secretary dodges questions on Biden sending migrants across the country. Yeah, she's uh, she's put in a spot she's not ready for. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, the other one that was there before her, uh, she said something about her boss was unbearable. And that would be Biden, I take it. Or whoever's boss over her in the White House treated her, I guess, terrible. That's why she got out. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Pollister predicts Republican wave in midterm elections will be even larger than expected. Let me see if I can bring this up right quick. <clears throat> Trafa Trafalgar Chief Pollster Robert C. Cahaley recently predicted that the Republican wave will be larger than expected in the midterm elections, labeling the new group of Republican supporters as submerged voters. Cahaley, Cahaley tweeted the prediction and speculation that Republicans will retake majority positions in both chambers of Congress during the midterm elections. Cahaley explained that he is basing his opinion on the reaction he has seen from President Joe Biden's recent Hetoric decrying mega Republicans as a clear danger to democracy, 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 oh, whatever, in America. Yeah, it's, oh boy, I just don't know. In 2020, people who supported Trump or exposed conservative values out of step with woke culture found themselves being canceled or doxxed. This led to hidden voters that most polling undercounted, therefore Trump supported in key battleground states, exceed expectations. Now that Biden administ ad <clears throat> administration has essentially classified mega-Republicans as a threat to dem democracy, marshalling federal law enforcement to focus on them, this move has created a new type of voter that will be even harder to poll and even estimate. In 2016, Trump supporters were called deplorables and other unflattering names, Cahaley wrote. This was a major contributor to the shy Trump voter phenomenon that most polling missed, which resulted in a major loss in public confidence for polling following the election. Now that the Biden administration has essentially classified makeup Republicans, as a threat to democracy, marshalling federal law enforcement to focus on them, he continued. This move has created a new type of voter that will even be harder to poll and even estimate. <clears throat> I do think I'm coming down with a cold. Yeah, I think I'm coming down. It's the change seasons. I get it every season. When they change, I get sick. <laughs> but I'll be here. It don't get me down. At this point, I think it's fair to say that Biden's pursuit of and attacks on mega Republicans has created an army of voters who will be virtually impossible to poll, even for us, and even more difficult still to estimate, Kahaley concluded. On September 1st, Biden addressed the nation, warning the mega Republicans promote authoritarian leaders and they fanned the flames of political violence. <clears throat> Donald Trump and the mega Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic, he stated. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to polls conducted by 538, Republicans are posed to take the House, with Democrats only having a 31% chance of holding on to the majority. In the Senate, however, polls show that Democrats have a 71% chance of maintaining control. Oh, God, I hope not. Oh, it's a horrible thing for me to say. But do we really have to have a Democrat, Democrat side? <laughs> you know, there's got to be some good. You know, there's good and bad in everybody. 
But what's going on with the Democrats right now and the worst ones in there are pulling the good Democrats down. We all can see it. We've all read it. We know it. And what a shame. What a shame. Well, people, I am tired. And I'm going to say good night. And I love you all. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Please look out for the young. Please. No matter. Family members. Children. Uncles. Aunts. Whatever. You never know who's, who's hooked on this crap. You don't know. Your next door neighbor. Just be alert. And take care. And I love each and every one of you. Have a great night. And God bless you. Good night. Bye. Now I'm losing my cam again. There it is.